Today marks World Refugee Day and this is a day of course designated by the United Nations to honor refugees around the globe. It also looks at the strength and courage of people who have been forced to flee their home countries to escape conflict or persecution. And this of course happens due to ongoing conflict in various parts of the world. More and more people are being displaced as we are continuing to see of course a lot of conflict unfolding even in our own region. Let's take a look at some of the statistics, of course, that we have been seeing and around 79.5 million people being forcibly displaced there. This is according to the UNHRC. Now, 1% of the world's population is displaced. And of course, this is around, um, you know, when you look at the number, around 50% of the world's refugees are children. It raises concern around issues of schooling, for example example and issues of access to sanitation and also 80 percent of Syrian refugees families live below the poverty line and this also raises some of the issues around you know human rights issues that continue to arise when it comes to these particular scenarios. Let's move on to this now. Cabinet's decision not to renew the Zimbabwean exemption permit is facing court action. The Helen Suzman Foundation says its legal action was triggered by what it calls the unfairness in the process followed by officials. There's been lots of reaction, of course, to this. And let's talk more on this um, with lawyers for human rights, Lindo Gutlem Dabe and refugee activist Roshila Naya. Thank you so much to you both for your time. I'll start with you, um, one of the things that the Helen Sussman Foundation says is that this process has been unfair from the very beginning. It doesn't give those who need to reapply sufficient time. Would you agree with that? Yes, I agree with that wholeheartedly. The day after the ZEP cancellation was announced, uh, myself and my co-convener, uh, um, conducted an interview on SABC and we identified the very same thing that basically you are going to be looking at uprooting people who are settled here, who have families here, who have intermarried with South Africans, who have children and who've made a life here. And it is a completely unfair and undignified thing to do. It is an inhumane thing to do to people to uproot them and in fact, um, make them stateless or homeless in, 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 in a very critical way. Lindo Gutle, one of the things that, you know, you're listening to, to Roshla talk about is how people will be expected to just simply be uprooted and leave. But talk to us about some of the human rights issues that you are seeing arise from this particular process. Well, the one issue is the issue of um, the... Uh, the minister not responding to um, um, to to organisations, uh, specifically civil society organisation and public interest mm -hmm. organisations um, that that were instructed by uh, a number of ZEP holders to um, begin to engage the minister on 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 the decision, and so. We've written several letters to the to the minister asking asking him to um, reconsider the decision to um, accept representation from um, our client communities, and those letters have not uh, received any courtesy of a response. And and this is I think is the crisis here is that the the, the entire application by the Helen Sussman Foundation is is built on that that the minister has not given sufficient opportunity to people who are affected by his decision to be heard to to understand where they come from to understand what the impact of his decision is and. Um for, for you, Roshila, one of the things that, uh, you know, people have said and some of those that are against this court action have said that this seeks to ensure that the ZEP remains in perpetuity and others are even, you know, compounding it with another mm -hmm. issue of those who are illegal in this country, forgetting mm -hmm. that the ZEP is for those who are legal. Talk to us mm -hmm. about this because there are some mm -hmm. who are saying it shouldn't be in perpetuity. Uh, look, uh, the, what what is very important is that there are 
a, a very large number of uh, Zimbabwean nationals who have made their lives here. It's about 170,000, uh, I think, and who have um, been living here and whose uh, the ZEP conditions have made it possible for them to, uh, you know, have jobs, um, basically work in the economy, um, pay rent, pay taxes, etc. And now, um, yes, the issue of illegal uh, immigrants is something that we hear about a lot. One doesn't deny that, yes, there are people here who have gained entry illegally or who don't have papers, but the issue is a lot more complex than that. Uh, one is during the COVID um, pandemic, uh, many of the refugee centers and DHA have been very uh, derelict in um, uh, you know, updating people's papers. And secondly, uh, you know, it's it's very costly for people to um, be constantly running up and down. And what, what our feeling is, is that the ministry, certain ministries are going contrary to what the constitution says and what our policies, what we have signed up uh, to for uh, international refugee and migrant protection, which is the rights of people to work here and to live safely. We are signatories to these documents and we are not, uh, you know, honoring them, uh, specifically DHA and SAPS and now the Ministry of Transport, we feel are putting people into precarity and particularly Zimbabwean non-nationals. I'd just like to say also that in terms of this issue or the term illegal Legal immigrants, mm. you know, with the with the rise in um, right wing uh, parties and activity, the word illegal immigrant has become a substitute for any poor black uh, person from Africa or Asia who is here, uh, working, living, seeking refuge. We know of cases where people who have papers, who have passports, having them burned, tore up thrown into fires when raids are conducted. And uh, we actually mm. think that this term illegal immigrant is fast taking on the tones of hate speech. And we really need to, as civil society and human rights organizations, and certainly my group uh, movement, Global South Against Xenophobia, is challenging this because yes. illegal immigrants is being used as a front to basically cover up a very right-wing tack that and, the government um, is taking. Roshle, if you may allow me to come in there, I'd like to go mm -hmm. to Lundukutle before you run out of time. Lundukutle, last year, um, I remember the minister talking about how the ZEP holders, um, you know, were going to be given 12 months to apply for other permits appropriate to their particular status or situation should they want to stay on. And you talk about how you've not been engaged by the minister. How is that process unfolding? Is it easy? for some of your clients? No, it's not. Um, it's, it's definitely not easy. What, what we know and um, what, uh, what is also in the, in the papers, in the court papers now, mm. is that if, 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 the, if the permit is going to come to an end on the 31st of December ah. this year, you are going to have a huge backlog of um, Zimbabwean migrants uh, moving into the as as um, refugee and asylum seeker system, and that is going to create a, a backlog there. And so, what you what you what you basically um, um, uh, going to face as a, as a department is a situation where you have removed people from a, a secure status to an insecure status. And, and of course, we have the view that the, the 12 months wasn't going to achieve that. Um, it, it seems the, there isn't any rational basis for why even that 12 months was was chosen by by the minister internal um correspondence within the minister and the dg seems to suggest that the three-year period would have been an appropriate period but it seems to us um, an appropriate period um, should take into account the impact uh, on, on on people who are affected by the decision it is only after you've assessed that impact, that that do you then come to uh, an appropriate decision in relation to um, time? I wish we had more time to discuss this, sir, uh, because you know it, it really raises quite a lot of issues, especially around even the insecurity of somebody who now has to embark on this process. But let's engage at another time, hopefully soon in the future. Thank you so much to you both uh, for that. That is lawyers for human rights, Linda Wutlam Dabe, and refugee activists.
activist Rochelle Nair.